So today um, we are going to look at uh, the basics, the basics of um, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is essentially front-end development. So here, let's start by creating a new folder and call it let's call it um, basics, basics of front-end. So we could open it by clicking this open with code if you have vs code installed you can just i'll show you so if you have vs code installed you can just um so if you have vs code installed to open a file or a folder you can just do this click on file then uh, open folder once you click here Navigate to where it is, like here, yeah, basics of front end. It is in the desktop. You navigate and select it like this, and then select folder. That's how you select, you create a folder in VS Code. So, this is VS Code. If you have installed it properly, this is what you will see. Now, uh, let's start by every HTML page has dot html attached to it you know html is essentially hypertext markup language you just used to build web pages that is essentially what is used to build web pages you know so let's start by writing index dot html dot html notice dot html so this index dot html or any file any file that has a name maybe you can have a name like boy so long it has dot html it is a web page so every html page looks like this it has a, a doc type of html it also has html attached to it and it has head so and also it has body now if you take a look at this let me zoom it you take a look at this take a look at this you will notice something so this is essential for every html page you write this to specify the type of html because there are different types of html there's html one there's two there's three there's four there's five so this specifies this signifies for five make sure you add this now every html every html html page has stuff you notice that this is two so this is called an element this html is called an element now this is a head element and every element has a beginning tag or an opening tag it also has a closing tag so this is head this is the beginning tag the opening tag and this is the closing tag so to write let me close this now to write the opening tag you just write something like this this is a head tag and then this is the head tag now the closing tag is written this way like this you notice right it has a forward slash before it so let's go back so this is essentially html now html has two structure the head head element or head tag and the body or body element in the head those are the things that users might not see do not even see it is mostly for computers for search engines for robots you know, viewing your web page it is used to hold details about your web page not the web page itself but in the body those that is the place where you keep your 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 the details of your web pages now in the head we can have a title a title tag now this title tag is where you define the title of the page now let's see we'll call it first html page Let's call it first HTML page. Now this title defines 
defines um, where you see um, how your page will be named. Now let's open this with live server. So when I'm talking about live server, you can come over to this place, um, extensions, you will see these extensions. Click on extensions. Now in the search extension, you can look for live server. So I'm not online. You can look for live server, but if you search for it, you can you will see it. So uh, when I'm talking live server, I mean this. Um, let me see. This is it. Live server. So just click on it and install it. It's nothing. Once you click on it, you will see install over here. Uh, instead of uninstall, you click on it and it's going to install. So that is how you open your live server. You download your live server. It's called an extension extension for for vs code now to open on live server let's open it on live server so this is our first web page look at this place you see something like um first web page right first web page this is where the title is this is the title first web page now we can now write inside the body tag we can create something like hello world and save it once you save it and come over here you see this is the body and everything that user will not see is in the head and in the head head tag so this body tag has has tags attached to it such as um, a h1 tag so a h1 tag is used to write um it is used to write titles of a particular web page so this is you can write this is the first page you can do this and this h1 goes from h1 h2 it goes this and h3 then h4 They have H5 too. And there is a H6. So it stops at 6. Just take a look at it and see the difference between the three. You see, right? H1 is the biggest and most important. Then H2, H3, and the rest. So there are other tags too. You know, there is a P tag, which is for paragraph. It is used to write paragraph. So it is used for paragraphs. So if you look at it, P tag. So there are other types of tags, you know. And this tag that I just mentioned now are called block elements or block tags. Block element or block tag. They are very, very important. They can stand on their own. But tags like um, L1, which is a list tag, or something like B, which is used for both. They are called inline. You know? So um, this is this is what HTML entails. Now, um, if you take a look at this now, it has no styling at all. It has no styling. So um, we are going to make use of um, CSS to style this. Now to add our CSS file, we can come over here. And, uh, and when I say CSS, CSS means cascading style sheet. So it is used to style or decorate a web page like this one. So we can come over here and create a new file. Let's call it style.css like this. And inside the HTML page, let's bring in our CSS. To bring in CSS into a page, you use what they call a link tag. You see, a link tag, it looks like this. So once you've brought it in, look at the name, you can now specify the name. So let's say you call this place uh, bingo.css. You can now come over here, this href, and write it bingo.html.css. Now, before I before I, pro I digress and progress, you see, look at this rel. Rel is equal to this href is equal to this 
and the rest so this thing inside here is called an attribute even h1 can have an attribute there are different types of attributes so you can actually so you can actually click you can click control 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 and uh, shift like this if you click control and shift you see other attributes there are a lot of attributes you know there are a lot of attributes in css and in, in html so you can click control shift i say shift control um space bar so that you see other attributes so um you have imported your css now let's save this and come over here and check our website there's nothing yet now let's style our h1 so in css css has a structure like like this so you you write the tag name for instance this h1 or h2 you write the tag name h1 and once you've written it you put curly braces these are curly braces these are curly braces so you can now style you can change the text color let's just do this like this so we can we can see our changes let me break this into two and uh, the web page too um let me take it to this area so h1 which is this so let's change the color we can see color and you you just put in your quotation mark you put the color name you can see something like red you say red let's refresh i think there's an issue let me know what the issue is um stylus css let's see what the issue is um h1 color red okay you don't you don't do this you don't do this you see you don't put it into into curly brace just specify the color name so you can do other things too you can see font size and you know what font size is the size of your font you can make it large and the rest or you can even use um you can use the uh, figures like pixel px so you can say 20 px it stands for pixel you know save it and it goes smaller you can even use 50 pixel it becomes even bigger you know so you can if you look at it it's not it's here you can actually center it to center it you can do something like text align center if you look at it it is now centered you see so also now the second thing is this eh? um i mentioned i mentioned the um, attributes so you can actually style this h2 with an attribute called class now you can say class class is equal to give it any name you want to give it so let's call it our h2 our h2 that's the name i've given to it now to select this to use this style to use this class and style this h2 you could do something like our h2 you can do something like you can just put background color it's not only color background color let's put background color of yellow now if you notice when i typed yellow there are some other colors that came around right at the end here so those colors are called hex hex codes so hex codes are used to 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 write colors so for example yellow yellow is the same thing as f f f f zero zero you know yellow is the same thing as this if you do this is it yellow is the same thing as f f f f zero zero and this f f f f zero zero actually stands for r red r g b which is red green blue you see and now red red green blue has each of them can have to have to um 
two letters and those two letters must range from from zero to zero one two three four five six seven seven eight nine right um a b c d e f let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen sixteen so meaning that this ff can actually be um nine nine it can be nine nine and the color will change it can be nine nine it can be even it can be but make sure you start with hash a hashtag it can be one one and the color is going to change look at it if you refresh if you save i mean to say its color will change so this zero zero can actually be um something like um four four and the color is going to change so essentially there are about 16 million colors in in css you know so if when i say rgb each of them should take two values and those two values can range from one zero to f so you can have one f four r you can have um two 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 five four green and you can have seven d four blue to combine them together you just use your hash like this sorry and um, so to use um, the background color you can just combine it hash first of all you write your hash then one f for red two f two five for two five for green and seven d for blue you can save it this is the color it gives us now if you notice you can't really see the two written in it let's change the two and um, we use the color to change it so let's use the color of um and essentially f f f f f f into six places actually white and zero 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 into six places is actually black try it you see so this is it and there are other there are other element there are other um other uh, what's it called styling um name you know and elements here and properties i mean to say there are a lot of them in fact there are over 600 or so of them so but this is essentially how you do it you know this is how you use your your attributes and the element you know you can actually put space here so to put the space you can say pardon pardon top which is for the top you can say uh, 30 uh, 10 pixel you see you can even do pardon bottom you can say 10 pixel see that right you can even do pardon left you guess it right at the left 10 pixel you see so you don't need to do padding right <laughs> there is literally no space here there is literally enough space here so this is how you do this so that is for style.css now if you notice something what if um you don't want it to be like this you want maybe when the user clicks on two it changes color and when they click on it again it changes color you know that kind of thing right now let's to, to achieve something like that, we are going to, um, first of all, understand that there is a programming language that we use to do that. It's called JavaScript. Now, to initialize or write any JavaScript file, you can do something like script.js. You notice, J uh, JavaScript. Now, we can actually, you know, you can actually put JavaScript here inside the body just below every other thing to put javascript like this using a script tag okay let's type it out a script and it like this a script
Now this script takes in an src which is source of where it is coming from. So we, it is coming from script.js and it is in the same folder. So you can say script.js script.js Once you've done that, you can now use this. In fact, let's let's take a look at what happens. So now let's um, first of all do our first console. Now when I'm talking about console, you can console it it's used to determine what's happening on your page. So to view your first console, go to here, then go to more tools, then there's developer tools. You can't really see it. But if you go if you click on more tools and uh, and uh, more if you hover on more tools you see developer tools to open your developer tools you can type control shift i control shift i you know you open your developer tools now when you open it there are a lot of things here yeah? it might be confusing at first but it's actually easy to understand what's going on so this console and this this element the element is like it tells you everything in your web page you can see this is everything in our web page. Now, this console is used to show what's happening or what is wrong with this page or what essentially is happening. So let's see. You can actually write console.log. Now, this console.log is used to write something in this console. Now, let's see. You can call it hello world. Hello world. See, it has written here in the console, right? You can see it. It's written here. Now, this console is essentially very important for debugging. Let's say you, you are writing code and you, you don't know what you are writing and you're making mistakes. You want to check where the error is coming from or the bug is coming from. You can use console.log. Now, when we talk about script, you, can, you don't really need it at the moment. You can comment it out. No, when you, to comment it out, you just put two forward slash before it like this and this code will not be seen by the browser now look you see it's not seen by the browser so that is just the thing now um script with script you can do a lot of things you know in javascript you can do a lot of things you can perform operations with javascript when i'm talking about operations i mean addition multiplication um addition multiplication division and all the other kinds of mathematical operations you can do it you can even check for date and so many things you know the javascript is very very powerful now for it but i want to do something here i want a situation where when i click on this two on this two or when i click on three it changes color or it adds this style this size to it now th this is a um, if you notice something here we use this attribute to style it right so what i want to do is this when i click on three it's going to take in this it's going to use this attribute now look at it now let's open our element if you notice something h3 doesn't have any style or attribute attached to it now we can come over to script and say something like now when you are talking about javascript there are ways to you know um declare variables and when i mean variables i mean stuff you can just save you know because there are, there are different types of data in javascript there, there are strings for instance to initialize a string you can do something like const so there is essentially three ways to initialize a, a variable you can use const you can even use left and you can use sorry you can use var but i recommend you use the two left and const you will see the reason why but so when you can you can write down your your variable let's call it h3 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 so we can say you can give it any name our h3 something like this or h3 so you have declared a variable this variable takes in a string so there are other types of data types aside from string 
string is just letters you know you can even have numbers uh, but so long it is in this curly in this uh, quotation it is a string so there are other types of uh, data you can have um number you can have number this number from one to three etc now you can have you can have boolean boolean and this boolean can be true true or false then you can have you can have um you can have string then string can just have something like this you can have this then you can have um you can have undefined you can have um null you can have null and so many other ones you can even have array array and you can have objects you can have objects and you can have uh, yeah that's just there are many of them there is big int yeah, big int and uh, and the rest of them so these are data types so let me comment it data types and with data types you can perform operations you know you can perform operations you can even do you can even do add let's call it add let's add one plus four should give us five right so we can console dot log it you can console dot log add and when you come over to your console you will see five okay so this is javascript now um let me also comment it out i don't need it now let's let's style this h3 so that when you click when someone clicks on it it changes the color now to do that we can just do something like i know it might be confusing now but just pay attention i'm trying to explain what you can do with a script now we can call your h3 uh, whatever name let's call it um, some some element so that you know it doesn't only come with uh, h3 or the name so you can select your document. So this is your document. Document. This is your document. You understand? So you can select your document. Document dot get element by name or by tag name. What is the tag name? The tag name is what? H right? The tag name is h h three right that's what we want to select get element by h three now if you console let's console dot log some element sorry there's an error here some element it choose h three right choose h three if you notice something here where it shows class name it has no class name we can add a class name when the user clicks on it you know i know it might be confusing at first but please just um follow this just follow it everything is going to be clear uh, this is your first time and i understand now um to add some styling to it to add those functionality you can say some element dot you can say some element dot um, right. I think there is a mistake here. Okay, so this this gives us a node. Um, right. This gives us a node. Okay, this is get elements by tag name. So let's redo this so that we get something simple. Dot get element get element by ID. 
let's use id so when you come to index apart from classes there are id so let's call this one my h3 let's call it my h3 so that we can we don't complicate anything get element by id of h my h3 so if you consider log this some elements some element you see this let's see my h3 my h3 let's see so this is it we've gotten my h3 this is the element now you can actually do some element dot dot on click dot or add invent list now sorry i'm using all this terminology dot on click event listen up on click what do you want it to do so there is something called a function in javascript a function a function is used to you know make something happen and there are different types of functions there's an inline function there's an array function and so on and so forth so whenever we click on it we just want to run this run this inline function we just want to say whenever we click on it let some element dot class list dot toggle so let's toggle the name of um where is the class list here our h2 let's just add the class list of our h2 let's see you see right you click on it click on it it toggles the this is just like a tip of iceberg of what you can do with javascript you see though it doesn't happen in h2 but in h3 it does like that so guys so this is the basics of a uh, front end and back end so next we are going to focus mostly on scripts that is where we have business weeks so we are going to start properly on how to you know uh, what HTML is all about, functions, and all those things in HTML. We are going to look at these data types again. So we are going to look at it in details because we'll be working mostly with all this. Do you understand that? All right. Do have a nice day and um, enjoy.